This is Perry Stone. Welcome to another Manifest Telecast. I don't know when I have been more thrilled and more excited to have a series because we're going to do a series for the next four or five weeks that we call Secrets of Paradise, Voices from the Edge of Eternity. What happens when a righteous person dies? Where do they go? Will you know them in heaven? Will they know you? What happens to babies that are aborted? What happens to children? What are children doing in heaven right now who have died and gone on to be with the Lord? We're going to answer questions. I have promised you for two years, many of you, that we were going to do a series like this on life after death, and we are going to begin that program this week. And I have with me two very distinguished special guests to my left is a man who's been in the ministry 75 years. He is 90 years of age. His name is Thea Carter. And we're going to talk about an experience that his wife had uh, years ago of dying for 21 minutes and going to heaven. You're not going to want to miss this. And then my dear friend, uh, Tommy Bates, who has a great revival uh, that has been going on at Rod Parsley's church. And Tommy has a great church of his own in Independence, Kentucky. Tommy's with me today. Tommy, so good to have good you to here. here. Let's just get started here. Brother Carter, you have been in the ministry 75 years. That's right. And you had, an, your wife had an experience. In fact, I have a note here. Her name was Thelma Carter. That's right. And in 1990, uh, she had to have heart surgery. Yes. Take us back to that moment and tell us a little of what happened uh, at that time. Of course, Tommy, Tommy knows the story as well. He can input any time he wishes. But take us to 1990. Tell us what happened. All right. Uh, my wife, of course, uh, had this heart condition. And uh, the doctors at Pineville, where we lived, uh, said they couldn't handle the case. They'd have to send her to Louisville. So uh, I took her to Louisville. The doctor went with me, his her doctor, mm -hmm. and uh, we uh, she had the surgery. And, of course, uh, I stood in the window and watched and listened and everything. And um, they uh, put her to uh, well, put, put her to sleep, I guess. I, I guess they put her to sleep. Anyhow, they... Uh, uh, numbed her until right. she wouldn't feel her uh, knife and so on, and they operated on her. And while they was operating on her, she uh, she died and went to heaven. Did you know she had died at that moment? Did you? Well, I, you I, at that moment, I didn't know it. Yeah. No, I didn't know it. I just thought maybe she went to sleep. Right. But anyhow, she went to heaven. And when she got to heaven, she uh, walking down the street of pure gold. <laughs> and uh, she met her little boy, uh, now, Charles now, Edward Carter. Now, I've got a picture of him. We'll show this later. But I have a picture in a book that you wrote, Charles Edward Carter. This was taken in 1947. Now, your son was nine years of age, and you were telling me that on Halloween, him and a group of boys were, were shooting firecrackers, and a that's truck right. came down the road and hit him, Yeah. and he was killed. Yeah, that's right. So, in other words, in 1947, your son was killed, but in, in 1990... Now, this is how many years? You're the mathematician, Tom. I'm not right now. <laughs> not right on the spot right there. This is 47, 56, 67, 87, 89. So 42, is that right? 42 years later, your wife dies, de is dead for 21 minutes, goes to heaven, and sees your boy. That's right. And w did he say anything to her? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, did he know who she was? Um, he, she talked to him. He said, Charles, what do you do up here? He said, why I play on the streets of pure gold here <laughs> with the children on the streets. Yeah. said, uh, we, uh, we play uh, games. Oh, and we have a good time on the street of pure gold. Wow. Brother Carter, he said that he saw one of the preachers you preached with, Brother Seal Eads. Brother Seal Eads. So said, your wife, your wife saw Eads. him. He said, uh, Seal Eads is my guarding angel. Your boy said that. Yeah. So no, now this is a revelation, see, oh, because really? apparently if a child dies, the Lord, now this is how I'm getting this, appoints someone who knew them on earth to kind of hang with them and be with them, like a parent. Yeah. Now, you know, Brother, Brother, Brother Carter, that should be a comfort to parents who have lost young children. That's right. That, in other words, they're just not up there by themselves. They're yeah. not out there wandering around. That God has appointed someone probably they knew on earth that's in yeah. heaven. Uh -huh. Well, that's that's powerful. Yeah. That is powerful. And so, uh, was there anything? Let's see. I'm, let me. I, your, your your grandson made me some notes here, and she said that she saw she could see her reflection on the gold streets. Yeah. And when she would look down, now she saw her father and mother who had died in the 1970s. Is that yes, right? That's right. Did she get to talk to them? Uh, no, she uh, she didn't get to talk with them, but she seen them. She saw them like at a distance or something. Yeah. Wow. And she also says she saw some of the old saints she knew when she was a little girl. Yeah, seen the ones he uh, 
watched them be baptized in the river. Oh. The different ones. Harvey's was the uh, pastor there and the preacher, and he baptized a lot of those people, and uh, she got to see them, people that she knew and uh, had been in church with. Now, she didn't really want to come back, but the Lord told her she had to come back to give this testimony. Yeah, yeah. And, Tommy, you know what amazes me? This testimony is going around the world right now. Oh, hallelujah. And whoever thought, I know that Sister Thelma Carter would have never dreamed her husband would be sitting here 90 years of age. Listen, this guy can quote scriptures like this. Hallelujah. I, he, we took him out to eat last night, Tommy. He was quoting entire chapters from the Bible. I've heard And I, I said, Lord, if you tarry that long and I'm 90, let me have the Praise mind God. that he has. Now, Brother, Brother Carter, I want to ask Brother Tommy some questions here. Tommy. We were, you, we were preaching the Barbersville uh, camp meeting at the orphanage there in Kentucky. We were driving back, and you start sharing with me an experience you had that absolutely is incredible. I want you to go. I got, I got 16 minutes here. I want you to go into detail. And we're talking here about voices from the edge of eternity. What happens in heaven? Do our loved ones know us in heaven? How much do they know about what's going on on earth? Tommy, go, let's go into that story because this is very fascinating. Well, I began pastoring at 25 years old, and uh, the Lord gave me a night vision. And uh, he was preparing me for the hundreds and even thousands of funerals that I would be participating in. And uh, in this night vision, I'd had a car wreck. Uh, it wasn't, uh, I'd, I felt my, th first of all, I started going down. And I was thinking in my mind, why am I going down? I could hear the music playing. I could, you know, I, I could, I, actually, let's move back up again. I had the car wreck. I heard the ambulance. The paramedics were there. I floated out of my body. I seen them working on me. I said, well, there's nothing wrong with me. Then the next thing I knew, I was like going down. I said, well, this isn't right. Mm. I'm supposed to be going up. But I, I, I felt this, and then all at once, I looked up, and when I did, I saw a light going through this tunnel, and I began to go up, 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 mm. up through this tunnel. And when I got to the end where the light was, I was at the mouth waters of the River of Life, oh, God. a welcome station. Mm. And it was such a wonderful place. I saw green hills, cattle, uh, chickens, sheep. I saw. It, did it look like Earth? In other words, it was very much like. Well, it looked a whole lot like Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, at least where I was. Yeah. yeah. Other than uh, the the river of life, the mouth waters, I could not see across. I saw huge trees. Explain the trees. along this river. They were. They almost look a little bit like a southern weeping willow. Right. The great big weeping Beautiful willow trees. Beautiful trees. Big, huge trees. You could, I guess if a dozen men tried to put their arms around them, they couldn't. And they're that big. Yeah, I've, I've seen the giant sequoias. There was no comparison. And they went up and they drooped over this river. It, and, and I saw a, a street of a strange color. I, I, it was goldish color, but it really wasn't gold. It was almost like glass. And there you were know, people. the Bible says the transparent gold, heaven. So I've never seen transparent gold. No. So I, that may be what I you saw. I can't describe it. Yeah. But people were walking, and I knew where they were going. They right. were going to the city. I couldn't go there. Right. I was just here at this welcome station. When you say a welcome station, my dad had an experience where he says that God showed him that people who have known you in your life, everybody, church people, grandparents, they actually meet you in heaven when you get there. Is yeah. that what you're talking about? Oh, yeah, about? they were waiting. And mm. they were waiting from every nation. I saw every <laughs> nation. I saw people dressed in Oriental type of clothing. I saw people dressed in African clothing. I saw, because mm. it, was, it was so different, because, you know, when you're raised up as a child, you think everyone's floating around in yeah, white yeah. robes and, you know, playing harps. And well, the white robes are given at the judgment when you're an overcomer. Hallelujah. That's how I've always said, yeah. taught that. And uh, I, I saw these things. I saw a man whittling furniture. I saw a, a woman quilting. I saw another woman doing tapestry. Tell, tell what the man said about the chair. He was making a chair. Well, I looked at the furniture, and I've been to England. I've right. been in castles, and I've seen some of the most ornate furniture you could ever lay your eyes on, And but I've never seen anything like this. It was so creative. I said, this is absolutely beautiful. And he looked, and he said, well, here. He said, he went to, I said, oh, no, 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 it took you too long. He looked at me, and he said, there's no time here. Mm. I said, but it's, I went to say it's worth so much. He said, there's no money here. Oh, my. He says, I'll make another one. Listen to when that. When I get done with that, he said, I'll make another one. And when I get, I just, I just could not get over no time, no money, the, the animals. D did they do, now we're talking about paradise. He, Tommy saw paradise. Do they, do they do pretty much what they like to do here? 
Does, did, did you get the feeling like that guy maybe was a wood carver, or maybe it's something maybe he wanted to do, and God lets him do it now? All I can say is it was totally creative. It was totally active. It wasn't a sit-down place, and I was only at the welcome station. I saw I, I, uh, thousands, multiplied thousands of people walking back and forth on that gold street by those big, huge trees that were, were hanging over the river of life, going to the city. I never saw the city. I was only at the welcome station. Nine, and nine. one particular thing that really stirred me up was a woman came up to me. I knew immediately who she was. I'd never met her in my life. Now, this is important. People I, hear this. I had never met this woman in my life. There was a pastor in uh, one of the local states in Indiana, and his wife. There had been some controversy between she and her mother. Well, but I did, did you know that? No, you didn't, I didn't know anything. You didn't know? Okay. I didn't know anything. I didn't even know her mother had died. Mm. I didn't know anything about okay. her mother. And when I met this woman, she said, do you know who I am? And I said, why, certainly you are. And I named the sister. She said, you're her mother. I knew who she was. By the Spirit. I knew. By the Holy I Spirit. Knew through the Spirit, we will know them. Right. It's amazing. Be known as you were known. And you don't have to be introduced. Whew, wow. You know. And she said, uh, you're not here to stay. And when you go back, would you tell my daughter, named her name, to quit grieving. Don't grieve over this controversy that we had because everything's fine, everything's fixed, and we're all right. Well, immediately, as soon as I had uh, been in contact with this pastor and his wife, I told his wife the story of what had happened. And uh, she said she, she was relieved and, and lived the rest of her days relieved of that. Uh, uh, so what had happened? You found out what had happened. What had happened? They'd had an argument. Happen. Oh, they'd had, they'd had terrible, it was one of those... Uh, situations with inheritance and trouble and this child was against that child and the they're, they're and, and, and from what I understand they had actually had an argument argument and then she had passed away the mama had away. passed away so the woman felt very condemned very grieved grieved and condemned, and condemned not having to go never, back to her mother never being able to make restitution and she felt this you know this it was actually causing a lot of nerve problems in, in her life wow but uh, what God did was he used that situation and um, it, it was just a powerful experience. And what the, the point I make, I'd like to make there, is that it appears that that we think that when people and there's a verse in the Bible that says that the former things will not be remembered or come into remembrance. So we think it means that when we die and get out of the body, we don't remember anything. That, if I understand that verse properly, has more allusion to the terrible things we had happen in our life, the negative experiences. God will erase those memories and. If we have a loved one who didn't make it, it will be as though they never existed. We won't remember that because it wouldn't be heaven if we're thinking about people that were lost. But it appears to me from every experience, and Tommy, uh, hopefully later on my dad will be able to come up. My dad had an experience recently. Dad's uh, 73 now, and he had an experience where he went out in the Spirit. And when I say out in the Spirit, you know, Paul talks about in 2 Corinthians 12, whether in the body I cannot tell, whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knows. And Paul was, Paul was caught up to paradise in 2 Corinthians 12, but he says to the people who he's speaking to, which is the church at Corinth, he says, I don't know if it was a vision, because you talked about a night uh -huh. vision, or if I literally came out of my body. Now, Sister Thea probably came out of her physical body because she died, she, and her soul and spirit came back. They actually had taken her, because I, I knew her from the time I was a child, and she gave me this testimony personally. Yeah. They had taken her to a room for the coroner. They had taken her to a room for the funeral home to come and get her. She had the sheet over her. Uh, she was dead 21 minutes. And oh uh, they had already taken her out in preparation for the funeral home. Now, for those of you just joining us, this is Brother Carter. He's 90 years of age. This is his wife, Thelma Carter, who in 1990 died for 21 minutes and went to heaven. And she said that they actually had a sheet over her. No, they had taken her to a room. Okay. Uh, the room where the coroner would come to uh, take care of the paperwork so the funeral home could come and get her. Okay, so so she saw her son, who had been killed 42 years before, uh -huh. knew that it was her, his mother, uh, carrying a conversation. He said that there were people who had died that they knew. That, now, when we talk about someone says, well, how could this happen? Because if a person dies, you bury a person. How can they be alive? Because you're a body, soul, and spirit. You're a tripart being. And according to Scripture, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So when you die, the body goes back to the ground of the dust, but the soul and spirit goes to God. 
And in this case, it goes to 2 Corinthians 12 to the chamber called Paradise, which Paul said is located in the third heaven. And so what, what, we're, what we're delving into on this series, now I said this earlier in case you missed it, is that we're going to do an entire series sharing with people. I'm going to have a man on next week who had a brain aneurysm and was taken up into heaven and saw his son who had been killed by gang members. And he saw, well, you'll just have to watch next week to hear that. But Tommy, it appears... Now, I don't know how much knowledge God gives them about what's going on here, but it does appear they have knowledge because Dad said, and I don't want to take this away from Dad if he comes on later, but, you know, your audience is always different every week. But Dad saw this, um, my grandma and granddad who had died. He saw Rufus and Mamie Dunford, one of the ministers he preached with, and he saw all these preachers that he hadn't even thought about for years who, whose soul and spirit had departed their body and they had gone to heaven to be with the Lord. And my dad said that he said, where's my mother and dad? And this, is, this would be my grandparents. I know they're here. They were one to the Lord. They prayed the sinner's prayer with me. They, 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 they loved the Lord. Where are they at? And he couldn't find them in this paradise area. And he was very troubled. And a man walked up to him and said, Brother Fred, and this is my dad, said, Brother Fred, don't you know that when you get to heaven, you get a reception? Now, you said that just now. Uh -huh. Tommy, that there's a place where people come. And this is what he said. He said, Your mother and father, Fred, are preparing for the reception when you come here. Now, here's the part that fascinated me. Dad said in this experience, like Tommy talked about in night vision, he turned and saw a dark, beautiful, dark-headed woman, and he looked at her, and he just smiled and said, I should know you. And, and the woman said, well, Fred, you should know me. I am Betsy Virginia, who died when I was five years of age. Oh, and, and we're talking about uh, 40 to 50 years had passed, and she a, was a beautiful young woman. And so these, the only way, let me say it to you this way. The Bible talks about speaking by revelation. The revela revelation is the unveiling of something which is hid. We always base everything we believe on the Bible. We know there's a paradise. We know it's in the third heaven. We know people go there when they die. Righteous people do. But some of these other things come from experiences of very praying, godly people. And I don't want anybody to miss this point because these experiences are people uh, who are godly. Now, I've only got maybe four minutes here. He see go ahead, Tommy. I had a confirmation with this night vision. The confirmation was I woke up out of sleep or night vision, my heart pounding, and then I went back to sleep. When I did, I had a dream. A second dream said, I gave you this night vision. It was like a voice spoke because your granny, your old granny, has just gone to, to be with me. You, wait a minute. Tell me, after you had the vision, same night? Yes, same that night. That voice came to you? Yes, the voice came so, to okay, me. So follow up on that. What and happened? I called my mother and I said, how's, how's granny So doing? you came out of this and called yeah, your mother? I called her. She said, okay. well, she's doing fine. She's downstairs asleep. She called me back an hour later and she said, no, she died in the night. We thought what? she was asleep. So it was a confirmation of well, the night vision. Do you think that was preparing it was you preparing for her? Because you were close to her. Not only, because my grandparents, I was only 25. Oh. I, I passed her 128 family members in our 2200, you know, church. Yeah, but, yeah. So my grandparents were the first people that I had to bury. Oh, my. So God prepared you. That, now, see, that shows you that is totally from the Lord, 100%. Brother Thie, did you want to say something there? Yeah, I'd like to tell you about a dead person being raised. Okay. Um... I was called one morning real early. The man ran to get me and said, there's a woman dying on, on Yellow Creek. I said, well, I'll go with you. I jumped in the car and we went and the yard was full, people crying. And uh, we made our way to the door and uh, Sister Wilder uh, come to the door and said, Preacher Carter's too late, she's died. I said, well, let us pray with the family. I got <laughs> in there and she was dead. And uh, we got to praying and uh, Sister Cornelius prophesied to me, said, rebuke death, rebuke death. I rebuked death, and she <laughs> got well, got oh, right man. up from there. She rose up. Got raised right up and eat. Yeah. <laughs> and I, and uh, you, you had that happen a couple times, right? Yeah. Oh, About yeah. what, twice, two or three times? Two or three times. Now, folks, and, and, but now here's the part that you need to understand, because he was telling us last night. For years, what, 30 years, he fasted every Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday and Wednesday. We're not talking about a fast where you just stay away from meat, yeah. you stay away from yogurt or peanuts. We're talking about, you know, the word fast means to shut the mouth. And he didn't eat for three days, well, for 30 and years. Not eating, not now, eating or now let me tell you something. If you live that way and you pray, you're going to see miracles. Yeah. And the church today, well, we don't believe in miracles. Well, they passed away. Well, they this. Well, how much fasting and praying have you been doing? And if you, the, the, the certain things do not come out but by prayer and fasting. And so these are some examples. Tommy, in two minutes, is there anything else you want to add to this that you, that you shared with us that you want to share with people maybe on your heart? The only thing I can want to say to everyone listening today is this, and that is that uh, 
this is only the house I live in. This mm. is a vehicle of expression. It's a carrier of me. This isn't me. It's just where I live. Mm. And I'm when I come out of this body, I will know everything I know right now. Mm. Because my body isn't what knows. Yeah. It's my spirit that knows. I had, I had a loved one pass away. And, of course, you know, I'll probably get an email on this. Someone will say, oh, I can't believe you would say that at a funeral. It wasn't at the, it was, it wasn't at the funeral. I wasn't preaching and said this. But uh, it was a relative that passed away. And, you know, our family, if you know, Italian people are jolly people anyway, <laughs> you know, laughing and jumping around. And so uh, I said, well, you know what? Um, it's just like a peanut. And they said, what do you mean? I said, I said, she's just like a peanut. I said, what do you, they said, what do you mean? I said, the shell's there, but the nut's gone. <laughs> <laughs> because the outer body is a shell, and the inside is the real you. Hallelujah. And though the outward man perishes, the inward man is renewed day by day. Well, I'm going to tell you something. We, I, I believe that this has set the pace for what we're going to be sharing with you for the next couple of weeks. Because, And I appreciate brother, you bringing Brother Carter down just for people to see an, a 90-year-old brother who's still sharp as, as, as a tack. And Brother Tommy, we love you and appreciate you as well. I want you to know Thank that. You. But let me just say something to you in the minute that I have left. And that is that, that if you are not serving Jesus, you really need to. Because, you know, you're not, this is not the end of your life. In other words, when your life ends, you will either go one or two places. You will either go to paradise to be with the Lord. And as much as preachers don't preach on this anymore, there are chambers under the earth called hell. And that's where you'll go. If you're not following the Lord, you don't have a covenant with him. That's just the bottom line. And our job is to help you to repent of your sins so that you can have a covenant with Jesus and be ready to meet the Lord. What we did... I knew that the Lord put this series on my heart. He really put it on my heart about it two years ago, but it just never came together. And then we met the right people with the right testimonies. And um, you've got to hear the rest of this. Uh, Bishop Kelly is coming next week, African-American pastor from California who had a brain aneurysm that saw his son who had been killed by gangs. He's going to describe some, he's going to tell you two warnings God gave, sent him back to tell the church. And that'll be next week. But listen to me very carefully. Repent of your sins and get right with God if you're not, because eternity is forever. And while he's operating on her, she, uh, she died and went to heaven. Did you know she had died at that moment? Did you Well, I, at that moment, I didn't know it. Yeah. No, I didn't know it. I just thought maybe she went to sleep. Right. But anyhow, she went to heaven. And when she got to heaven, she uh, walking down the street of pure gold. <laughs> and uh, she met her little boy, uh, now, Charles now, Edward Carter. Now, I've got a picture of him. We'll show this later. But I have a picture in a book that you wrote. Charles Edward Carter, this was taken in 1947. Now, your son was nine years of age, and you were telling me that on Halloween, him and a group of boys were, were shooting firecrackers, and a that's truck right. came down the road and hit him, Yeah. and he was killed. Yeah, that's right. So, in other words, in 1947, your son was killed, by, and then he is 90 years of age. His name is Thea Carter, and we're going to talk about an experience that his wife had uh, years ago of dying for 21 minutes and going to heaven. You're not going to want to miss this. And then my dear friend, Tommy Bates, who has a great revival uh, that has been going on at Rod Parsley's church. And Tommy has a great church of his own in Independence, Kentucky. Tommy's with me today. Tommy's so good to have good you to here. here. Let's just get started here. Brother Carter, you have been in the ministry 75 years. That's right. And you had, your wife had an experience. In fact, I have a note here. Her name was Thelma Carter. That's right. And in 1990, uh, she had to have heart surgery. Yes. Take us back to that moment and tell us a little of what happened uh, at that time. Of course, Tommy, Tommy knows the story. Is in 1990, now this is how many years, you're the mathematician, Tom. Oh, I'm not right now. <laughs> not right on the spot right there. They said that'd be 47, 56, 57, 87, 87, 89. So 42, is that right? 42 years later. Your wife dies, de is dead for 21 minutes, goes to heaven, and sees your boy. That's right. And did he say anything to her? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, did he know who she was? Um, he, she talked to him. said, Charles, what do you do up here? He said, why well, play on the streets of Pure Gold here <laughs> with the children on the streets? Yeah. said, uh, we, uh, we play uh, games. Oh, and we Carter. have a good time on the street of pure gold. Wow. Brother Carter, he said that he saw one of the preachers you preached with, Brother Seal Eads. Brother Seal Eads. So your wife... Yeah. This is Perry Stone. Welcome to another Manifest Telecast. I don't know when I have been more thrilled and more excited to have a series because we're going to do a series for the next four or five weeks that we call Secrets of Paradise, Voices from the Edge of Eternity. 
What happens when a righteous person dies? Where do they go? Will you know them in heaven? Will they know you? What happens to babies that are aborted? What happens to children? What are children doing in heaven right now who have died and gone on to be with the Lord? We're going to answer questions. I have promised you for two years, many of you, that we were going to do a series like this on life after death, and we are going to begin that program this week. And I have with me two very distinguished special guests to my left is a man who's been in the ministry 75 years. Well, he can input any time he wishes, but take us to 1990. Tell us what happened. All right. Uh, my wife, of course, uh, had this heart condition. And uh, the doctors at Pineville, where we lived, uh, said they couldn't handle the case. They'd have to send her to Louisville. So uh, I took her to Louisville. The doctor went with me, his or her doctor, mm -hmm. and uh, we, uh, she had the surgery. And of course, I, I stood in the window and watched and listened and to everything. And um, they uh, put her to uh, well, put, put her to sleep, I guess. I, I guess they put her to sleep. Anyhow, they uh, numbed her until right. she wasn't feeling her uh, knife and so on. And they operated 